We're back, episode 10. Crazy. Emily! <laughs> Mike, there's no key for the cable car. Josh, he's gotta have it. Oh, he's gone. We're too late. Shh, quiet. It may have taken him down to the mine. Wait, no more. I'm gonna get that key right from that thing's goddamn bedroom, and then I'm gonna get us all the hell out of here. Oh shit! Hey! Whoa! Oh my god! Find a way down to where this fucker lives. We go. Repentance, one hour until dawn. <sighs> What's happened to him? Is he a monster? I wonder how much these sessions are of any help to you now. Just won't listen to me and think seems pretty fucked up. Mm -hmm. So I I'm gonna leave you now, Josh. It's time to learn. There's more to be afraid of that can be dreamt up by the unhinged imagination of a self indulgent, spoiled little brat. You had so many people cared about you, who were willing to help, but at every turn you choose to push them away, now you're all alone. Though so by the sounds of things, you won't be alone for long. No, you won't be alone for long. Deep breaths, Josh. What is he doing down there? Hannah? many people in that one room. Alright, we're playing as John. What the flip? No, no, no. You're not real. You're all alone down there. No. All alone. Okay, get away. with us now. Family. Get away from me! Get away! Why didn't you save us, Josh? Why did you want us to die? I didn't want you to die. I swear. Jump scare? What the fuck? What is that? What? What is that? Oh, I don't. I don't take orders from you. Oh. 
Is this what you want? No! Oh no! shit! Why what are you doing this? Leave me alone! Why are you doing this? Why did you save us, Josh? Why did you want us to die? Why did you save us? Why did you want us to die? What the? F what the flip just happened? It's hard to believe that. Maybe a miner. Maybe someone who worked in the sanatorium. There's so much weird shit happening up there that wouldn't even begin to surprise me. What kind of weird shit? Someone was capturing the Wendigo. Had them all tied up in these restraints. I saw some real fucked up shit. Wow. Do you think they will encounter Doctor Hill, that um, psychiatric guy, whatever you want to call that kid? The man, the man with Joss. This also might be the last video, because this could be the ending. Oh. The lodge is on fire? Something's gonna drag you down. Oh. Come on, it's okay. You sure? I'm not dead yet. Name is last words. <gasps> oh, this crazy hit me on my fingers. <gasps> Welcome to the show is who's gonna be dragged down? Because I have a feeling it we will. What is that? Danger. Oh no. What is that? Is that no? When to go, when to go, when to go. There's a when to go, when to go, when to go. What? The flip. That's Chris. Josh is mentally dead. Oh, oh, oh. He's tripping or something. Josh! M Mike. Josh! Hey, man. Don't, don't hit me, please. please. Well, you were deep in it, man. Full mental jacket. We didn't think we'd get you back. Hey, let's just get the fuck out of here. Okay. Josh, do you have the key for the cable car? Uh, yeah. We did it. Cape Car. You see that over there? The key to freedom. That means there's a direct way out. <laughs> there's no way Josh is going to make it up there. Okay. If you help me up, I can go back and tell the others we're okay. Yeah. Yeah, good. You bring Josh back the way we came and we'll all get the launch. Be careful. Yeah, you too. <sighs> all right, let's. All right, let's go. You fucked up something good. 
Why are we playing as Josh? Why can't we play as Mike, my favorite character in the game? Like Josh, like why? Why can't it be Mike? You didn't have to hit me so much, man. Uh, yeah, um, I'm sorry about before, man. I, I thought you killed Jess. Jess is still alive, guess what? Did you know that? Jess is alive. Who's gonna be dragged down? We know there's a Wendigo in here. There it is. Mike. Uh. Oh! No. Oh, you're what? not real! No, you're not! Butterfly. We haven't played as Matt for ages. And he's still the same jacket. Why is he still the same jacket? Mike and Jess is music. Music, the music. That. Some sort of cave in here. It was me. What? I fell through that roof. You fell this far? Jesus. These two of us. What? Oh, Mike is probably the f affected than like the least. Like barely has nothing happened to him. Like he has a couple of rips in his jeans. That's all. The head. This is. We're so close to the end of the story. No joke. No. Is that Mike? Was that Mike? Lost. That's the. That's the highest one. Right, we need to keep Mike alive. That's that's one thing. Matt, I mean, and Mike. Matt and Mike are probably my favorite characters. Oh, I like Matt better. Oh, I mean, Mike. Cause Mike, he's been brave the whole time. It's been like, great. Come on, come on. 
if he hid and I suck it. No! Jessica is properly dead. Oh, it's six o'clock? Climb. This is probably the end. She's next, I feel it. Just run. You're back to swimming. She's basically... Oh. I, have a I have a feeling that one more person is gonna die. But I don't know who it's going to be. The music's getting louder. But it could be Sam, to be honest. Are you back down in the cave? Oh, that's the hut. Right. Sam and um, Matt. I'm not letting her die. Close the door, close the door, close the door. Yep, yeah, nice, nice. Like what happened to Josh? I got him. God, what an awful way to go. Not good. Why do you think we 
I should do. You should check the basement. There might be someone left down there. Matt. Matt's gonna be down there. Matt is the only person that was shown to be at the lodge. And clearly Jess is now dead, properly. But we can confirm that Josh and Jess are dead. Same as Chris. Chris is gone as well. How do you rate our chances of survival? Hmm? I'm trying not to think about it. Thank you. 
spike. He held it right up to my face. Right here, right in front of my nose, and he could have shot me. He almost shot me, the prick. I mean, you go out with a guy for however long, and you think you know him, but man, this one really takes the cake. I was right there, and I could have done something. I tried to do something. It wasn't good enough. I thought we were close. After his sisters disappeared, he'd come and talk to me. He said I was the only one who understood him. I thought... I thought we had a connection. If you need someone to talk to... I'm fine. Sometimes, after a traumatic experience... I said I'm fine. You bringing in Meat Brain next? Gonna kick him around a bit for me? I'm sorry? Meat Brain, Mr. Muscle Brawn, Matt the Incredible Sulk. Is there something we need to know? Oh, no, nothing important except, um, you know, how he basically left me to die up on a freaking tumbling tower like a world-class douche nozzle? It was my fault Mike died. I wasn't supposed to move. But I did. I shouldn't have done and nothing. he saved me. So it's my fault. You need to listen to me. I don't care if you believe me or not. It doesn't matter because you will. You need to go down to the mines. What's in the mines, Sam? I've seen what's down there. And I'd give anything to unsee it. Wow. That, that was crazy. That game was crazily good. Wow. That was absolutely crazy. My first horror game series. That was absolutely insane. If you guys have watched the whole, through the whole thing, congratulations. Because we have just made memories in this channel. But I can't believe my, my, Mike died. That was it. Episodes. Oh wow, well, you can go into different episodes. Wow. There's more? Mike. Wait. Memento Mori. Jealousy, isolation, loyalty, dread, vengeance, violence, revelation, despair, repentance, and we don't want the credits. <sighs> Bonus content. Whoa. Meet the cast. I am Hayden Penetier, and we are here at the studio recording until dawn. My name is Rami Malin. Oh my gosh. My name is Megan Martin. My name is Brett Dalton. No. My name is Antonella Lantini, and I played Hannah and Beth. My name oh, is both. Jordan Fisher, and I play the character Matthew. Matthew. Wait, Jordan Fisher? I'm Nicole Bloom, and I play Emily in the game. 
you bum My out. name is Noah Flights. I am Galadriel Steinman and I play Ashley. So Until Dawn is a story of eight teenagers who uh, revisit this cabin in the woods about a year ago. He looks exactly like him. One of the things that Larry does really well is make these multi-layered characters, and I think for just the story in she general, played both. Follows Pan and Beth. horror film plot lines, but the characters are so unique in themselves, and I think that's very cool. Oh, yeah, this was the right thing to do. What? You know, get everyone together on the anniversary. I mean, Josh seemed really pumped about us all doing something, didn't he? Yeah, no, he definitely did. I haven't seen him so excited about something in forever. Good, good. Sam, Sam and I have uh, a few things in common, such as being huge lovers of animals. And she's a huge animal lover. She's vegan. She, um, she is a pacifist. I'm not quite sure if I'm going to go as far as saying that I'm a pacifist, but uh, she's spunky and cool. I know that she... I think is is made fun of a little bit by the rest of them who who think that her morals and her beliefs in that area are a little ridiculous and they don't agree with them but she doesn't care it doesn't stop her from being herself and oh, no, I want to see Mike talk I hope I have in common with her you know he definitely uh, can be depressed at some times and a bit of a loner, but he, he takes some solace in one of his sister's friends, Sam. And, uh, invites everybody back to the same house the next year to kind of find some closure. Jessica is, uh, she has a whole lot of personality. She is definitely the sort of mean girl character what? that, no. you know, at school she, she knows she's pretty, she knows that boys like her, and she's going to use it to her advantage. He's got a big heart, and you can tell that that's very evident, especially how that's Matt. his girlfriend, Emily, and, um, you know, he's, he's kind of a meathead, but in the best way possible. They should wear the exact clothes that they were. She right. to, to get Emily, them, no, not you. You're I probably my least favorite. Driven, I can definitely relate to that. My, my character is uh, Chris, and he Chris. is uh, what society might consider the nerd of the group, um, and he kind of embraces it. Um, Ashley is, she's a little more serious than some of the other girls. Um, she's definitely very intelligent and, and thoughtful. She kind of looks at the whole big picture of things. She's not quite as geeky as Chris, but they connect in a lot of ways. Mike is like the guy go. on campus. He's uh, the class president who has some charm and has, has brain and I don't know, people seem to like Mike. He gets away with a lot though. He's he can be kinda kinda jerky. The fact that he, he no. wants everyone to be happy. He wants for he's, he's Mike, a, you're he's my favorite character. Um, I can I can definitely attest to being you know, that guy. I'm, I'm always the friend that wants everybody to be happy and wants everybody to be taken care yeah. of. Yeah. That's definitely yeah, that. definitely. But also, like this character is just so fun. I rarely get to play the bitch, and so it was really, it was really fun to do that. The spirit of things, seriously, what's wrong with you? What's wrong? Just trying to lighten the mood, Em. Don't be like that. Like what? The way you're being. You always get like this. I just think this is just the coolest thing to be a part of, and um, I just think it's going to take the world by storm. I really do. I think this genre is the wave of the future. And I think that um, once people see the potential behind it uh, of getting to interact with the drama that you're witnessing unfold um, in such a realistic way, um, that this this is how entertainment's going to be from now on. Definitely. Hi, this is Lee Robinson, production designer on Until Dawn. The production design for Until Dawn started with the great teen horror script that sets the characters in a Canadian winter mountain lodge, being a contemporary setting with visual clues derived from classic films of that genre, such as Hitchcock's Psycho and Stanley Kubrick's Shining. 
The storyboards are vital to the production design as it allows the designer to understand the scale of the environments to be made and the detail that would be seen to create the atmosphere of a horror. This took us into concepts that took these storyboards further, visualising the world through the colour palette, the lighting, tone and the mood, and developing key locations such as the lodge, the cable car stations, the forests themselves, the wilderness. As you can see, the environments and atmospheres changed quite a bit from warm and inviting to cold and threatening. The Millionaire's Mountain Lodge was a key example. It was designed to be made from nearby stone and timber, embedding it into the landscape, with a contrasting and contemporary interior, needing wow. to be opulent and extravagant. We created dark and claustrophobic corridors with ominous and large open spaces, almost cathedral-like in size, and with huge structures to silhouette and dwarf the characters within providing a labyrinth to explore and wander. Each character was developed with a strong visual identity in mind, with contrasting colours, tones and silhouettes to identify them, each to have their own texture, pattern and shape, so that when they were lined up you could always identify them. The costume designs allowed a range of clothes that would suit them for the cold winter weather but also have an element of style and individualism so that the audience could look at them and relate, recognising themselves within them. A lady would like to cuddle up with her man by a nice cosy fire bathed in atmospheric mood lighting. Right. It'll get plenty toasty once we're rubbing up against each other. My yeah. fire and mood lighting. Yes. Working with the lighting artists, we really brought the look and feel of the world together, and this required a thorough understanding of the visual language of teen horror. A key scene was where all the characters emerge out of the rear of the lodge chasing Hannah. A contrast is evident straight away from the exterior wilderness to the warmth of the lodge. The attention to character lighting here is through the bounce and rim lighting, accented colours and composition, creating characters that come from the dark into the light and back out with an emotional effect. Guys! There's someone outside. What the hell? Hannah! What's going on? Where's my sister going? Oh, it's fine. She just can't take a joke. It was just a prank, Han. Wow. The signs of fear. Oh, this is cool. Until Dawn is a game that's full of horror. And one of the things we decided to do early on was to take a scientific approach to how scary it was. So we did experiments on people and we measured their responses to the game. We've created a test area. It's as close to a home setup as we can get it. We've recruited ordinary people to play the game and we've left them to play it on their own. The only difference is it's rigged with cameras and microphones that relay the data through to the next room where people are watching them play. Bracelet here, we use for biometric testing. It measures the player's emotional response. It's called a galvanic response sensor. It makes contact with the user's skin and it measures the electrical conductivity across their skin. It's the same principle as an old-fashioned lie detector. When you're, when you're stressed, you sweat a little, very sensitive, it picks up tiny changes if the player is feeling anxious or scared. That data is fed back to a testing team, comes through as a graph. Go a bit of a drop, Hannah. Oh, sorry. Oh, they would die anyways. Damn. Heart rate goes up. There's no point testing one or two people, you have to test a lot of people. When we have a scare that consistently has a measurable emotional response, then we knew it was good. If it didn't have that, it goes back to the team for improvement. The data doesn't tell us what's wrong with the scare, it only tells us if it's working or not. Well, it actually works. Josh. Here what? we have a chapter relatively early in the game. Weirdly regular. Right? No, not. Nothing regular about it. We have to create tension and anxiety in the player so they are ready to, to receive the scare. Ah! 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 
Oh my gosh! Give the player time to recover, to cool down, to calm down, and then start building the tension again bef before we do the next game. Definitely. Hey. Uh, what? Hey. What the hell? Ooh, you just got mumped. Adrenaline There's two things we found. One, one is we could look at the scares, analyse if our expected scares were working effectively. Were people shrieking and covering their hands or were they getting an emotional response from it? And being scientific about it means that we strip out people's opinions about whether things are working or not. We've got data and we look at the data. If it's working, we're happy with it. Very scary. <laughs> scared and wanting to get away. Um, I actually may be a bit scared to play on my own, but <laughs> you know, room with the lights on. Yeah. I've been playing with the lights well, off yeah, and just my LED yes. lights. I'm scared to get out, I would play with someone in the room. <laughs> and the lights on. It was one of the scariest Nah, the lights on are dumb. Wow, that was cool. A thousand, a thousand of pages. The score. Stage. There's so many. What in hell's name? America's Northwoods border region. Oh, this is where Within it comes this from. land of 10,000 lakes and miles of dense timber, a hideous creature is believed to lurk. The Northwoods is probably one of the last frontiers in America. There's still a lot of places in, in this area that hasn't been set foot by man. Monsters and mysteries exist here because it is remote. Up in the North Woods, winters are long. In times of biting cold and isolation, a devouring monster is believed to come forth. It's terrorized native people for generations. Growing up, I was told, like, don't go outside, the Mindico will get you. Among the traditions of the northern Algonquin tribes is the Wendigo, a monster that can seize hold of a person to carry out its hunger for human flesh. Many Native Americans fear even talking about this Wendigo, and even the mention of the name will let the Wendigo find out where you are, and it will open you up to be possessed by this Wendigo. The most famous case of a Wendigo possession took place in 1879. That's a long time ago. In the deep woods outside of Edmonton, Alberta. Swift Runner, a Cree Indian, was a trapper and a guide. He had left town the previous autumn with his wife, six children, and his mother. But when Swift Runner returned in spring, he was alone. Swift Runner came into a nearby village telling this heartbreaking tale. I had to watch them starve to death. Of his family being killed by starvation. And that he was the only survivor. My whole family gone. It wasn't hard to understand a family falling victim to a brutal winter. Yet something was suspicious about Swift Runner. He was a strapping man, and he came into town weighing over 200 pounds. It didn't look like somebody who had just weathered a terrible winter. He wasn't malnourished, didn't look like he was starving. He looked healthier than ever. After a few nights, it became clear that something was wrong. He started having night terrors, screaming in his sleep. I am the Wendigo. Villagers alerted the police. Swift Runner actually guided them back to his winter cabin. When they got there, that's when they saw the true horror. Human skulls were scattered around, many bones, some of which had been snapped in half and the marrow inside had been drained. They had never seen anything like it. Swift Runner had killed his entire family shooting them, 
hitting them with an axe, strangling, and then eating most of their bodies. Sheesh. Right up until the moment the noose was on his neck, Swift Runner swore the evil spirit of the Wendigo had possessed him and twisted him into a cannibal killer. When he was on the gallows, Swift Runner himself said, I am no longer a man. Wow. Sheesh. Bring it to life from the stage. This cool. We'll watch these two and then I'll end the video. My name is Will Biles, Executive Creative Director of Until Dawn. The first part of getting a believable facial performance in game is to capture topographically the actor's range of emotional expressions as separate versions of the same head. Every tiny nuance gets digitized and merged, effectively creating a model that can recreate every facial movement that the actor makes. Once the topography has been recorded, the actor's performance itself can be captured by using a predetermined set of marker points drawn precisely on the face and a high-def helmet cap wirelessly linked to capture devices. The camera is the small box where it looks like the microphone should be. It records in high-def the movement of the dots throughout the performance that will drive the expressions captured earlier. Unlike other systems, this form of capture is far less lossy because there are fewer interpretations between performance captured and performance rendered finally in game. The audio is also recorded via two separate Levalier mics attached to the helmet. It takes a while for the actors to acclimatize to carrying around the recording devices and the helmet cams, but very soon the shoot becomes similar to any other effects shoot or a green screen shoot. The actors in these scenes are only recording facial animation, but use cursory body movements for pacing. Wait, and maybe we should all stick together and find everybody and make sure they're all okay? So, one, one, the year before the prank. Take two, Mark. Other than the other actors, they have to use their imagination for everything and everywhere that they are supposed to be seeing and feeling. From a hot midday studio in Los Angeles to a freezing midnight mountain in British Columbia. Oh, cool. Until Dawn has a dynamic, ever-changing story, the facial performances and the body performances are recorded separately with different systems. With the body capture, we use reflective bead suits and an infrared camera matrix system that drives the CG bone hierarchies in our character models. <sighs> These performances cover everything from character locomotion, scene-specific performances, and stunt work, most of which was recorded at studios in Pinewood and Shepparton, near London. Hannah! Hello? Combining all the elements seamlessly in the final game becomes a formidable editing and logistical task. Every variation, both physical and emotional, must be combined in these multi-edits. <laughs> Scaffolding props have to stand in for the sets, because the hundreds of infrared cameras have to be able to see all of the reflective beads on the actor. Wow. Okay. So, I think that was it for, basically, yeah. That was it for Until Dawn, everyone. I would like to say that this game is great, and, like, you guys should play if you guys want. Um, yeah, what a game. This was uh, probably the best game I've probably, like, the p best horror game I will play, I've played and probably will ever play. Well, yeah, that's crazy.
mystery man. Yeah, we need. Oh, lost totem. We found one right at the start. Wait. Right at the start. And one at the end. That was the first one. We didn't get the top one. Wow. I think Mike would have died anyways. Um, but yeah. Hope you guys enjoyed. If you did, leave a like, subscribe and turn on notification. This game was so good, and yeah, I hate to say this, but peace out.